Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome to Wix Fixer. This is Velo 101, or learning JavaScript with Wix code. And today we are going to be talking about conditions, or you might know them as if statements. And we're going to be building a more advanced calculator. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back. Um, we're going to be building on the calculator that we built during the last video. So if you didn't do that at all, I would recommend checking it out, or you can try and catch up uh, during this video, but I won't be repeating some of the stuff that we talked about last time. The only difference here between our calculators is that I've added this operator dropdown. And instead of just having number plus number, now we're going to let the user choose what operator they want to use. Uh, and if you take a look at the choices here, we have plus, uh, minus is behind here, manage choices, divide and times. Okay, and we're going to allow the user to choose what they want to do with these two numbers, what kind of calculation they want to make. And in order to do that, we're going to need to use something called an if statement. And an if statement is basically how we introduce conditions into our code. So let's check it out. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the name of this function from add to calculate. Because we're not only going to be adding here, we're going to be doing different kinds of calculations. So I'm going to do calculate. Okay, that's going to be the name of our function. And here as well, inside of the event listener, I'm going to change the function that we're calling. And Getting both numbers is going to be the same, but we're going to need to get something else in addition, and that's going to be our operator. So I'm going to say const op operator, uh, or you could just write it out completely, operator, and with an A, and say that that is equal to the value of our dropdown, which I also called operator. So that's going to be operator dot value. Okay, remember this is coming back as a string, but that's not a problem for us at this point. And now basically what we're going to do is we're going to introduce an if statement. And the way you write up an if statement is by writing if, then we open parentheses, and inside of this parentheses is going to be our condition. And then we open squiggly brackets for what we want to happen if this condition is true. So for example, let's say if our operator is equal to, and when we're talking about equality, we use three equal signs. Uh, there are some situations where you can also use two equal signs. I don't want to confuse you at this point. So for now, just have in mind that equality is three equal signs. Because remember, one equal sign is assigning. So I'm saying, okay, this should be equal to this. And for the equal sign, I'm saying this is equal to this. And we're going to say, is this equal to, for example, plus? Okay, so if the operator that we selected in our dropdown is equal to plus, then let's say that our const result will be equal to num1 plus num2. And now we see that we're getting a little bit of an error because this result cannot be found, okay? Because we're only declaring our result variable inside of our if statement. And what we need to do in order for this to work is to declare our result variable outside of the if statement. And we can do that right over here on top. And this time we're gonna need to use the let keyword because we are going to be changing the value of this result. So I could just say here, let result. Okay. And I can either just leave it like that uh, and say, okay, we're going to be using a variable called result later on. You could also just make it null to begin with. And null basically means it uh, doesn't have any particular value, has a value of null. Uh, there are several ways that you can do this. I'm just going to be leaving it like this. So I'm telling my code, okay, heads up, there is a variable called result. I haven't told you what it is yet, but I'm going to be using it later on. And then here, instead of saying const, I can just assign this value, uh, this variable, sorry, a value. 
And later on, if I want, I can assign it a different value that will erase the previous one and rewrite it. Okay, so now we've set up this, the situation where the operator is a plus sign. And in this case, we have four different operators that we want to deal with. So we can do it in several ways. Uh, either we can have separate if statements for each operator because we know there's no overlap, okay? Or we can use something called else if, okay? And basically this says, okay, if this condition is not true, then check for another condition and execute the code in it, okay? And this is relevant uh, for certain situations where there's more of a connection between the two things, okay? And we want one to have priority above the other. So in our case, where all the operators are quote unquote of equal status, uh, there's no operator that takes preference that we want to check for first, uh, there is really no reason to use this else if statement. While we're learning about if, if statements, I'll just mention one more thing, which is plain else. Okay. And for that, we don't have a condition. We just say that this will be what happens if the condition in the if statement is not met. So in this case, if I was to write here, for example, console.log not addition. Okay. So let me demonstrate how this code would execute. So I'm going to go into preview. And I'm going to enter two numbers, so five and seven. I'm going to choose the plus operator, and I'm going to calculate, and we get 12. And let's choose another operator, for example, division. And I'm going to calculate, and we'll see that here in the console, I got not addition, because this was what was in our else statement inside of the uh, if statement. Right, so what our code basically did is it said, okay, is the operator addition? No. So console this. Okay, so that's how you use if and else. But for now, since our um, things that we want to execute are unrelated to each other, they're not conditional, so we can actually just use several if statements. And there is a more convenient way of doing this, which is called a switch statement. Uh, but I want to try and keep things simple and only introduce one or two new things uh, during each episode of this uh, series. So I'm just keeping it simple and we're only doing if statements for now. Okay, so we have if, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this over. There are several different views about copying code. Uh, some people say it's always better to write out your code yourself because it makes it less you know, error prone. Uh, but I am more in favor of copying code where I can, and worst case, I deal with errors that come up later on. For me personally, I feel like it makes things faster, but you know, you can try it out and see what works for you. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change all these operators so that we have all of the things that can come out in our dropdown. And here we need to change what the calculation is. So here we're doing addition, here we're doing subtraction. For division, uh, we don't use the uh, colon like we could use in uh, regular math, but we have to use the dash. Okay, so dash is what will do division. And for, for uh, sorry, for multiplication, we use the star. Okay, so num1 star num2. Uh, and these can either be adjacent or they can be separated. Okay, so now we changed all of our um, conditions for each of our operators, and we can test out our calculator. So I'm going to go over to preview, and let's enter 7, 5, and do multiplication, calculate 35. I change it to subtraction, 2, division, 1.4. And now what we can do is we can try and 
strain our calculator to see if it stands up to different situation. So for example, what if one of these numbers is lower than the other? So I say 3 and 5, and I do subtraction. So will this give me a, what, what will happen here? Will this give me a negative number, or will I have an error, or whatnot? So let's calculate. And we see that I got a negative number. So I see here that my calculator will work in lots of different situations, and I don't need to deal with any kind of extreme situations that might come up and might throw an error for me. And it's always very important after you write your code to go in and test it and try and break it uh, because the user will definitely manage to break it if you don't. Uh, so it's always important to check your code and do what's called testing. Uh, so this is our more advanced calculator. And today, just to recap, what we learned is conditions using an if statement and uh, how to create a calculator that has multiple operators and options. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, and if you did, please give it a big fat like and subscribe so that you can get alerts about the rest of this series. And I'll see you next time.